breasts. What a way to start a video. Episode 3, and because I'm filming this before I've made the title, I'm sorry. We don't know what the title is yet. Dave's arrived, Aussie Dave has arrived back into Patea. Another six month spell. Giab, his girlfriend, they get along great. Perfect match. I just can't believe how lucky he is that he walked into the go-go bar and went, you, and they've hit it off. So he's back for six months. She's had a nose job. Straight back into their routine. They're in the morning, swim, massage, both of them, breakfast. And they tend to sort of kick around in the days and drink a lot, um, eat a lot. Jim, for Dave, he used to go to the gym. Jab went with him. And that was on Second Road at a big hotel um, towards Walking Street, where he got a membership sorted. So, nice gym. Things just carried on. He was still looking at me in an hour, and he was still coming into my bar every single day, whether it be morning, lunchtime, or evening, or even all three. He was a great customer. I spent a lot of money in the bar. He wasn't extravagant. He wasn't one of those guys that just threw his money around. He wouldn't be keep ringing the bell. He'd buy me a drink. He'd buy a couple of people. He was chatting to a drink, you know, but he wasn't throwing his money about. He didn't come across as arrogant and rich and that sort. Really just a lovely guy. Great business head. And again, he helped me so many things, ideas. Now, I remember this really well. In the bar, in the evening, maybe about eight o'clock, probably about 10 customers in the bar, plus Dave and Jab came in, and we got onto the subject of Jab's breasts. Now, Dave was about 35 years old. I don't think I ever asked him, but he was about 35. Jab was, I'd say, 27, 26, 27. She had a great figure. Now, Jab had uh, said to Dave that she felt that her breasts were heading south, let's say. They were moving downwards slightly. And I was sat at a round table. These are high, high tables, so you're sort of on a stool. Dave in front of me, Giab next to me. And I think Frozen was with us chatting and drinking. We started talking about Giab's breasts. At this point, Dave said that Giab felt that maybe she needed some sort of cosmetic surgery on them. And he would like it also. And Giab lifted her shirt up, her blouse shirt up, to reveal to everyone in the bar her breasts. She then stood up, showing everybody. And Dave asked me, and I think even Frozen, to feel the this is episode, feel the weight of her breasts and the shape and what we thought whether she could, surgery would be good. It was sort of embarrassing. Your friend is, well, you can understand. Anyway, so I participated. Frozen did as well. And then one of my girls, and I can't remember which one, who had had a breast implant. Um, oh, was it Ruthless? I can't remember. Came across and lifted her top up, <laughs> which was the first time I'd seen this. So there I was in a bar, Giab, topless, one of my bar, the girls in the bar, also topless, who'd had, and then was asking Dave to feel, and frozen and me, and it was like one of the most weirdest conversations I'd ever had in a bar in my life. But we participated and we were comparing and everything and the conclusion was they put the shirts down eventually 
Dave bought this, I think it was Ruthless, bought her a drink, and then she joined us. And they came to, to the conclusion that yes, Gieb needed a breast, it wasn't enlargement, size wasn't the problem, um, but it was firming them up. I'm making a YouTube video about breast enlargement. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> But anyway, firming, he, he thought that she wanted them firming up. More cosmetic surgery. Now, according to the girls in the bar, back then, 15 years ago, you could get the enlargement or firming up or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was about for $600, $500, $600 American dollars. But no, not Dave. <laughs> He'd only been back a few weeks. That was it. Off they went to Bangkok. Yep. Best hospital in Thailand. Still can't remember the name of it. And they decided, um, which afterwards I learned, to slightly enlarge uh, and to firm up and all the rest of it. He paid about 3,000 American dollars. Way more than anywhere else. But yep, yeah, paid. Again, they stayed up there. They actually stayed at, they went off, I think, Phuket or somewhere, at a few weeks before they came back. So it was maybe nearly a month by the time they came back. And they came back, all had healed, and yes, <laughs> That it was actually lunchtime, so no customers, maybe one customer. In they come, happy to see each other. We were all sort of chatting away, and immediately, yep, up comes the shirt from Chiab. And have a look, Simon, have a feel. Oh dear, yep, had them done slightly larger, firmer. She was very happy. So now the nose had been done which I don't think was an improvement. And now she'd had the breast then. <sighs> what could be next? You know, not much left, surely. There we go, breast done. Now Dave decided on this trip that he wasn't gonna get a bar. He'd looked, he'd seen mine, he'd seen all the numbers, he'd seen the prices, all the key money, everything. He really, there's not money in it. There was not money in it. Not enough for him to spend his time doing bar in Thailand. So he came to that conclusion and said, I'm not gonna do it. He decided that he's gonna have a look around Thailand. It was time for a road trip. And uh, he'd already paid the hotel for this six months, but he was just gonna go off. And he took Giab for the remainder of that six months all around Thailand. Off they went and they'd come back and go and come back. <clears throat> and he'd drop into the bar now and then. And then he, in the last month, said that he was taking Giab to Australia with him for three months. Again, it was only a three month trip back there. Then he'd be back again. But this time he was taking Giab with him, which was great. And he went to Bangkok, got a lawyer, didn't muck around, straight to a lawyer to sort out all the stuff he needed for visas. And because of his background and money, it was just a tourist visa. He had no problem. Immediately got a visa for her. Six months finished, off they went, Australia. Giab was over the moon, fantastic. They went, Australia, three months. Are they in love? I don't know. Still don't know at this point whether they've fallen in love. They're spending every 24 hours together, every day pretty much. But such a great couple. He was beginning to teach Giab uh, a business sense. Her English, she was still learning English. It was getting better and better and better, really remarkable watching someone learn 
your language from not knowing a thing. But he was paying for a good teacher to teach her, so. He was, she was learning business, his business, what he does. Had a great time in Australia and they reappeared. <laughs> Back to the same hotel, I'm sure it was a Sabai Lodge. Got the same room. He was back again for six months. Paid again, straight out for the six months. But he was going to do some travelling again. But he's paying for that room and he's not going to sleep in it. That to me was a bit mad, but he did. Paid six months up. Put all his stuff there. All GM stuff there. Everything sorted. But this time, GM on the return seemed to step up the ladder in society. She changed slightly on this next visit. She, as if um, she realized now that she was in a relationship, he's given her money, he's putting money in her bank. She must have been sending money to her family, putting lots of money in her bank, uh, buying her beautiful clothes, buying her everything, jewelry, gold, more sunglasses for her enhanced nose. Yeah, she she did seem to change slightly, and this is the point. I I would say their relationship changed. Well, they were still getting on great, but to me it changed because she had he had changed her. He had taken her up market, and she had slightly changed. On returning, so they're back in Patea. They come to my bar. Just the way her, she walked in, the way she held her frame and talked, it was different. But he was over the moon with her. he got a lot of friends now in Patera, he'd met loads of people and was floating around different bars. And he said to me, whilst they were in Australia, that Giab felt that she wasn't beautiful. Now why he didn't just say to her, you are beautiful, Stunning, absolutely lovely. You don't need to change a thing. What would a woman change after? She's done the nose, done the breasts. Um, her body looked great. She didn't, she'd never had kids. Um, she was stunning. For some reason though, she thought she wasn't. And she wanted Botox. For some reason, she wanted to just change her cheekbone slightly, and her chin wasn't the right shape, which would have meant surgery. And we were all sort of scratching our head. She doesn't really need it, and and I said to Dave, she doesn't need it. She's she's a beautiful girl, and he's well. She wants to have these things to make herself feel better. And if you build your own confidence up and you're happy with your, your body, he said, then I'm happy with her. it. He, he said, it'll look great. It'll, you know, it'll just be perfect. Three months into their six months trip, her decision was the Botox first. Again, Botox injections were pretty new back then, um, unless you were in the cosmetic surgery market. It was only really the rich that were playing with that sort of thing. So price-wise, the girls didn't know, nobody knew. It was Bangkok, to that hospital, again. She had to have injections. I'm not sure how it all works, but it was a few injections over a few weeks then let it rest and then more and more over the coming months so she she'd had some in her just her cheeks here um over a few weeks they stayed up in bangkok or maybe they wandered around but i didn't see them again for a good five six weeks and then they appeared back in my bar 
video, we talk about Botox. What a great storyline this is. <laughs> See you soon.